So I have a printmaking studio called Supernatural Relief Printmaking Studio. And the reason that it is called Supernatural Relief Printmaking Studio is because the medium of my art is called relief printmaking. And relief printmaking is taking a, a block of wood and carving it into a stamp and printing the relief. And relief means basically the mirror image. So if I print something, um, I have to reverse the image backwards for it to print the correct way. And that will make more sense as we go along. But anywho, this is the logo for my studio. And here we go. So we're gonna go over some basic woodblock printing techniques today and um, background history of block printing. This way we'll fully understand where this comes from and why it is still relevant today. And uh, yeah, because we, we use block printing every day and a lot of us just don't know that we do. But anywho, a little bit about me. My name is Ashley C. Um, I studied uh, printmaking at MTSU. Uh, I was a studio art major and I took a studio class in the summertime. It was about a month. And uh, if you know anything about summer courses, they crunch everything into one class, whether it's spread out into two months or one month. But for this one, it was eight hours a day for a month. And I had homework at night and it was, it was intense, but I got through it. And I loved it so much that I changed my major to that. And um, I've been doing it for the past 10 years. I've exhibited my work in the local university gallery and now the museum environment, which I'm so happy to uh, be working with the Frist. Um, I'm originally from Lebanon, Tennessee, and I moved to Nashville in order to betterment my career. All right. So everyone loves this picture, right? This is called the Great Wave of Kanagawa, or the Great Wave. And this was by the great art, artist uh, Hokusai. And he's a Japanese artist who practices the, uh, the art form of the Japanese block printing technique. And it's the first print of the series called 36 Views of Mount Fuji. So if you ever have some extra time, please check it out. But a lot of people think that this piece here is a painting. This is not a painting. This is a woodblock print. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and the colors are printed in such a way that it looks like watercolor. And that is why it effort effortlessly just looks seamless. But this is a woodblock print carved into wood printed onto paper. So uh, block printing, really goes back to uh, the beginning of time. It is the most ancient of all printmaking techniques. So everyone knows about screen printing, right? We all love t-shirts. Well, printmaking, um, specifically block printing, predated screen printing. Screen printing came about in the 1960s. Um, this has been around since the dawn of time because the first reliefs were basically um, drawings on caves, cave walls, and most famously, the reliefs in the, uh, the hieroglyphics in Egypt or um, Kemet. So yeah, um, block printing history can be traced to prehistoric origins, a precursor to printmaking, which is, um, you know, basically, if there was an umbrella, printmaking and block printing would be at the top. Um, carved and exaggerated images were a form of human expression, primarily executed through various types of prints. The earliest evidence on record so far is from the Sumerians who date back to 4000 BC. They also had stamping devices that they pressed into moist clay. So before wood and stone, they used clay. <clears throat> uh, th the transition from uh, clay and stone to wood occurred in Kemet, dating back to 6th to 7th uh, century AD around the same time. Examples of printing on textiles and paper uh, appeared in China. Paper was invented in China as early as 107 BC, 
which opened up more opportunities to print images. So block printing has always been a form of communication and art. Um, and yeah, it's, it's literally like one of the first art forms ever. All right, now, as far as printmaking, here are some basic uh, supplies. We have paper, which I prefer to use Stonehenge paper. Stonehenge paper was specifically formulated for block printers. Um, and people who use kind of the wet medium really like Stonehenge paper because it has a very nice texture to it. It tends to um, absorb ink really well. And uh, when you're block printing, you kind of need a little bit of texture on the paper to really get it to, I don't know, just, just really get that nice transfer from wet medium to dry. And then we have our ink. Today we'll be using water-based ink. Um, it's easy to clean up and also it's easy on your clothes. You can wash right out. Uh, Oil-based ink, which is what I prefer to use in the studio uh, it's about a three-step process to clean. You have to have oil, which I use either baby oil <laughs> or vegetable oil. Um, and then I use uh, Simple Green to get that off. Simple Green is like an automotive spray, but it's all natural. And then to get that up, I use a, um, a glass cleaner. And then soap and water if there's any residue after that. And I also use soap and water on the utensils that I used that have ink on them. So um, yeah, that's a lot. So we're gonna use water-based ink today. Um, and then we have the ink roller, which is the, uh, the Baron, no, the Brayer. The Baron is the, uh, it's like a handheld device to press down the paper onto the wet block. And then we have a paint scraper, palette knife, the actual wood block. Today we'll be using a linoleum block, which is a block of wood with um, a layer of linoleum glued on top. And just to show you, linoleum is a material that's like in, in the bottom, like in your bathroom floor or your kitchen floor. It is a rubber material and it's very thin. If you see here, you know, it's, it's very thin. And the rest of this is wood. That is there for stability. And of course we have our wood cutting tools, uh, an X-Acto knife if you need to cut the paper and our cleaning supplies. So um, I've also been doing a um, kind of like a trial of just carving logo blocks for people to see how people would enjoy that. And it turned out to be a great idea because I mean, who doesn't love having their logo on everything? And people uh, also pay a lot of money to have their logo put on things. And it can get really costly if you're working with a t-shirt company. But if you learn how to do it yourself, you, know, you kind of cut that part of the process out and then you're able to get more creative and repeat patterns, different colors, etc. So this is uh, some video here of a time lapse of me carving a logo block, just to kind of give people a quick visual representation of what it is that I do. So here we are going to transfer a logo onto the um, onto the tracing paper, which is, we're gonna use that to transfer it to the block. So first we have to take the logo from the business person, transfer it to the tracing paper and then put it on the block. But you have to remember to reverse the image so that it will print correctly. This whole process, you have to think backwards because with block printing, you work in the negative. So, I'm carving out the negative space. And it also is going to print the relief, which is the mirror image. So it's, it can get, it can get um, mentally straining at times if you don't watch it. 
So here I have the logo and the tracing paper uh, has been laid on top. At this point, I have already um, transferred it to the tracing paper and I am now transferring it to the block and I am darkening it with a pencil. And in this video, I'm continuing. But now I'm using a Sharpie marker. And the purpose of the Sharpie, Sharpie marker is so that I'm, I can create a key. The key is going to show me what is going to be um, cut out and what is going to be left. What you leave on the block is going to be the raised surface. That raised surface is the stamp. So what we're doing here is we're creating a stamp from scratch, basically. And then, um, <clears throat> so historically, this method was the method used to um, create the first books and newspapers. So this, this art form is really important and it's really old at the same time because this was made popular in Europe in the 13, 1400s um, in the era of Albert Durer who um, really made this art form pretty much popular and travel across the, ro the world. So now I have transferred the image, I have copied it well, really drawn on top of it with Sharpie marker. And now I'm just carving away the excess to reveal the raised areas, which would be the stamp. And I'm using clamps to secure it so that it doesn't move from me as I'm cutting. Because these tools are very sharp. If I cut myself, you know, it hurts. <laughs> and once you cut an area, you can't put it back. So um, I wanna say in Japan, I don't know, but I forget the country, but they call them suicide prints for a reason. And the reason why they're called suicide prints is because once you carve an area out, you can't put it back. So you can't glue it, you can't do any of that. So once it's cut, it's cut. And that's why they call it, call them suicide prints. Here, I just cleaned out the excess areas here. And now I'm left with the central image and the text. And if you look closely, the text of, of this company's logo is backwards. Now I'm going in and um, carving the intricate details of the flowers and the moons here. And I'm slowly just taking my time, um, inching away at little areas in order to reveal the text. And each little nib that I'm carving with is a different size. So I have to keep that in mind as I'm carving because if, if you don't know the shape well and you don't know how it's carving, then you could potentially carve too much and just carve off a whole letter. Well, you, you know, you can't put that back if you carve it off. Now, most of the central image has been carved. The text is, um, well, the, the letters here have been separated. I've, I've carved in between all the letters. Now I'm just going in and just clearing it out. And this next video, I'm just doing some more uh, tidying up here, pretty much just finishing it up at this point. And as you can see, this is a very um, laborious 
art form, you can't rush this. You have to take your time. So if if you're like in a state of like, you know, you're you're upset or whatever, it's really not a good time to handle sharp objects. So um, when, when I do work with stuff like this, I have to really exercise patience. All right, so that was some video demo of an example of a block of a company logo. And you can print that on bags, you can print that on paper, you can print that on your mail correspondence at your desk. You can also take that block, put it on display at your desk and put it on a little easel. I mean, you, you could do so much with that. And, uh, and I originally came up with that idea, um, you know, just needing a logo block for myself. And so I made a little bookmark here <laughs> to test it out and it worked great. And here um, is another logo block that I made for a friend. Their name starts with the letter O. So I just picked out a, a capital letter O and I just carved it. And of course I did it backwards. So when this prints, it prints the correct orientation. So when I do a test print, um, I use what's called newsprint, which is literally, literally the paper that um, newspapers are made from. And this just kind of lets me know how the line work that I carve is going to print. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show an example of a test print soon. Um, so the test print is an opportunity to see how it will look and to correct any imperfections or carve deeper into shallow areas. Shallow areas do not print well, if at all. So what that means is if, like to the naked eye, it looks like I carved it well, but that you, you can't always go off of that. The test print is going to show you your imperfections or areas that need to be um, worked on a little more. So that test print is literally like a map to show you, okay, this area looks good, but this area is a little shallow. You should cut a little bit more. And um, yeah. So um, when, we, when I use water-based ink, um, the cleanup is pretty simple. You just use water or um, you can use like some Lysol wipes to clean. And the ink takes about 30 to 45 to an hour to dry. Um, and that variation is depending upon how thick the ink is on the block and how much is on the paper. So um, of course, the more ink, the more time it's gonna to take to dry. Um, now oil-based ink, like I mentioned before, it has a three-step cleaning process, vegetable oil, simple green, natural cleaner, and Windex. It takes one week to two weeks to dry. Yes, seriously. And I, and I mean that the oil-based ink, um, oil-based ink does not oxidize, which means no matter how much wind or what is blowing in the air, it doesn't even matter if it's hot in the room. It does not matter. It's not gonna speed up the drying time. The only thing that is going to let that oil-based ink dry is time. It's gonna take a week to two weeks to dry. And I've actually had an instance where it took a month for one set of prints to dry. Yes, it's, it's crazy, but oil-based ink is higher quality. It has a sheen to it and it can last for years. Like I did prints in 2010 with oil-based ink and they still look phenomenal. As long as you take care of it, it'll be great. So um, as far as the tool cleanup, you clean them according to the ink that was used. So if I use water-based ink, soap and water, let it dry, I'm done. If I use oil-based ink, I gotta put oil on all the tools. Then I gotta put simple grain on all the tools. Then I gotta use um, soap and water to get all that off. And then I gotta do the same process for the table that I um, inked the block on. And then for the block, I take, um, some uh, some newsprint and I'll continue to print the block until literally the ink, like I'm, I'm literally printing the block so much that there's no ink on the block anymore. So um, I print it off and then I'll take like a wipe or something and wipe it off. 
but that's usually with linoleum blocks with with wooden blocks most people use some kind of like um, chemical solution to dab in a, in a paper towel and kind of just dab it, dab off the ink or um or just wipe it off but anywho now i'm going to show you all um, how to actually carve a linoleum block, what that looks like. I'm using my laptop, so um, I'm going to do the best that I can to get a good angle here. So I started working on a linoleum block that is six by nine, and it's the one with the triangles that I just showed you. Well, this is going to be a challenge. Uh, hold on. Camilla, can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Did you want to stop sharing on the computer? Um, can I share from my phone because this is, this is feeling, I don't know. Yeah, feel free to switch if you want. Okay. You want me to log off on the computer? You don't have to as long as it's uh, muted. Anyway, while I'm while I'm switching, um, I want to finish this presentation and. Yeah, turn this down. So this adorable boy, um, I did some um, blocks of his footprints and I turned them into um, a wood block. Um, so these are the capabilities that are possible. It can be displayed as a sculpture or woodwork art, like on an easel. Um, you can block print on fabric, which is most, most known in India and Japan, especially with the block printed saris, which I love. Um, textile design, which is wallpaper, presentation packaging, like um, say you have a product that you're about to send out the mail and you wanna put your logo on the, um, the mail correspondence of your packaging. You know, that, that's really cool. And it shows people that, you know, you care. And also more um, printed fabric and home good items such as pillows, sheets, tapestries, table runners, etc. cetera. Um, you can also customize your personal items and clothing such as uh, backpacks and fashion items like uh, dresses and t-shirts. Um, you can also customize books and newspapers. Like, like customize your own sketchbook. Um, maybe you're in the book binding and you make your own book and you want to decorate it. Um, and of course, this is the block of the baby footprints that I did. And yeah, this is the linoleum block that's nine by 12. This is also another block that I've done. And this block is, a, is, is huge. It's the biggest one that I've ever done. It's about a two foot by two foot block. Um, and it's a wood block and it took me about six months to complete. And I, I'm serious about that. It took me a while to complete this, but it was great. Anywho, that is the end of the presentation. And now I'm going to share uh, the live demo. So with linoleum blocks and well, really all blocks in general, um, you want to have good stability when you're carving. 
So I like to use clamps to secure the block to my surface, which this is an ad adjustable art table. And um, it can lock in places at different degrees up to about 45 degrees, which I like because if, if I'm working with a large block, I can just adjust the table to that height and um, it's easier to work with. So uh, the best thing to do is to carve away from yourself. The blades are really sharp and they come in different sizes. So for the speedball linoleum cutter, you have six knives or nibs into the handle. And this is a travel version. You literally just unscrew this at the bottom and you put your nibs in there. This is the V gouge. It literally has a little, I don't know if you can see that, but it's the shape of a V. And then this is a larger V gouge. You can actually tell this is more of a V shape here. And then this is more of a knife, like an X-Acto knife, but stronger material. But yeah, you get the idea. So each one of them is a different size. So right now I'm changing that V gouge to a smaller one. And then we're gonna go over printing. So this block, um, has been drawn with pencil. There's gonna be um, some art in the center that I'm gonna add. It's gonna be a man and a woman. That's kind of why the center is kind of, is kind of um, still blank, but that's because it's still in progress. Now you see black lines and then you see the negative space in between. When you carve blocks, you're not, you're not carving away the black. You're carving away in between the black lines. That is why I go over and I draw a Sharpie to let me know, carve this, but not this. So to ensure that I'm not going to just make a bunch of mistakes, I take this uh, V gouge here and one, I'm gonna carve away from me and I'm going to outline these triangles. And I'm gonna outline every one of them. The whole point of outlining it and then carving it is so that when I clear out this triangle, it's gonna be a lot easier. And then my, my corners are not gonna get frayed. They're not gonna get cut out. So you just go in. And this material is a lot easier to carve than the wood material, but there's a pro and, and a con to that. This is easier to carve, but it doesn't have texture. The wood blocks have texture because it's, you know, it's, it's wood. So whatever wood that you're carving, um, you, you can kind of play around with that wood grain in your art, or you could choose to carve it away whatever you decide to do. Okay, I'm still outlining the triangle. And I'll put the camera a little bit closer because, yeah. And as you can see, I'm taking my time. This is, this is not an art form that's very fast. All right, almost done lining this.
Okay. Now, now if you look close, you will see I just did an outline of the triangle. And you can tell the freshly carved line versus the linoleum that was not carved. So this is an uncarved and this is carved. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch this nib here to one that's slightly larger. That way when I cut the center portion of the triangle out, I'm gonna use less carving strokes to do that versus using this little bitty one and potentially scarring and cutting into the area that I'm not supposed to carve. So to do that with the travel speed ball cutter, you unscrew and then, and once you use these enough, you know what size that you need to, to use next. So, um, For instance, um, I'm going to use the, the other V gouge that is slightly larger. See, it's still a V. Take that out, you put it in, you put it in between the metal there, twist, secure it. Now you're ready to carve again. Now this time, I'm going to go into this triangle and clear out this larger area. And I'm meeting the points of this sharp uh, knife with the point of this triangle because the, the whole point of carving is to try and match the shape that you're carving out. So if I see a triangle, then I'm going to break that triangle down into many shapes until I carve it all out. That way, a huge um, work that I'm, excuse me, a huge piece that I'm working on um, is not so daunting. I just take one area at a time, break it up into small parts and work on each little area as I go. And as you can see, since I picked the right tool, I may have able to carve out a majority of that line there. That's good. And I'm just taking my time carving it out. And as I go along, I use a Sharpie to kind of draw over what I've carved, kind of to just to see what it might look like. It's kind of like uh, proofing before I get to the, to the step of using the, uh, using the, um, the, the test print paper, which is newsprint. So now when, when you look close at this, this has been carved away. And you can tell the difference between this, which hasn't been carved, and this. It's completely gone. So when this prints, it's only going to print the black. And how how you make that happen is when you work on this triangle, which is the background, you're gonna carve in between each of these lines. And when you carve in between each of these lines on each side of that triangle, it's going to form the, um, the perimeters of this triangle. So that's what I mean by you have to break each section down so that you don't get confused and you don't um, forget where you are because it's really easy to, to carve and just kind of, you know, get into the groove and then you accidentally carve a section that's black that was supposed to be white. All right, now I am going to do a test print really quick.
All right. So over here, I have a block that I have already pre-carved and this block is called Motherly Love. And it's a beautiful block. It's a, um, a woman holding a child in her arms. The reason why this block is so dark is because this block has been printed. When the ink dries, it dries the color of the ink. The block looked like this in the beginning. So that's why I have to use Sharpie because, you know, pencil, um, pencil can fade and smudge as you're, as you're moving along. So I have my block, I have my uh, brayer, I have my Baron, which is to apply pressure. Have my palette knife. This is an example of the wood carving tools that I use. All of them are a different size. But since we're working with linoleum today, I just wanted to show you what they look like since we're not really gonna use these today. This is the newsprint paper. And you see how thin it is? It's relatively cheap paper. Um, we just kind of use it to, like I said, to test print the paper and the block to see what it's gonna look like in the end. This is a pad of printmaking paper uh, or Stonehenge paper. Here I have done some test prints of um, some of my business friends' logos just to test them out to see how they will print. All right. So this is the ink that I use. This is Speedball block printing ink um, and it's water soluble which is great for kids because if it gets on their clothes, it can wash out. All right, so we have the block. And we have our station. Going to open this ink and get it going. And I've learned that I have to use a little bit more water based ink for block printing with uh, linoleum since water based ink is, is a little thinner than oil based ink. So this is the brayer. This one is by Speedball, and uh, this one has a detachable roller. It literally just pops out. This is good for cleaning, because sometimes when you're working with oil-based ink, the ink can get all kind of inside and crusted, but the pop-out, it literally just pops in and out. So we have our ink on the plexiglass. And what we're gonna make is what's called an ink well. This ink well is uh, poured in a line and then you're gonna pour whatever you need little by little and you're gonna pull it down and you're gonna go left and right to evenly distribute the ink onto the roller or the, the brayer, excuse me. And then you look at the brayer to make sure that the ink is evenly distributed onto the roller. And you see that slight shine, that means that the ink is on the brayer. Now the block is ready to print. You go up and down. 
And you really try to make sure that the ink gets in all areas of the block. And this is a soft brayer. So um, this one is better for softer materials like linoleum, which just means it rolls on linoleum better because it's, it's softer. So the main key in this step is to make sure that no debris gets in the ink. If it gets in the ink, then it's going to get on the block. And if it gets on, if it gets on the block and you print it, then you, you just print it your debris on your block, I mean on your paper. And then if it flakes off, then you're going to have a uh, a, a blot, like a whole little circle of just, yeah, it's just going to flake off and it's going to, it's not going to look good. Now, do you see that sheen? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, okay. Now we're going to test print. This is the sheet of newsprint paper. You see it's very thin. Carefully place it on top, smooth it out. Then you take your bearing. This is a speedball bearing. It has a nice handle on it. And it has um, some smooth, like a smooth grid down here to kind of make sure that it's, it, it applies even pressure here. So you take this and then you smooth it down. The key is to not miss any spaces and you want to make sure that you apply even pressure because if you miss a space, if you don't apply even pressure or if you don't apply enough ink onto the block, then it's not gonna turn out correctly. So I'm just smoothing it, going up and down, left and right making sure that I cover all areas of the block. Usually I use a printing press, which the, uh, the machine metal printing press, not the wooden one, um, that one was popularized and created in the 13, 1400s. And uh, it pretty much changed the world because the world was largely illiterate before that press was made. Oh, look at that. This is like printmaking gold right now. <laughs> you slowly pull one corner. And look at that. Let me move this out the way. Look at that. All right, now I'm gonna do this one more time and I'm gonna print using better quality paper. Now, if you look closely, there's a little blotchiness right there and a little blotchiness here. So that means from this test print, I need to put more ink in these areas. So this just kind of lets you know what you need to do so that you don't um, have mistakes on the good paper, which is quite more expensive. The paper that I like to use is Reeves paper. And that paper can run me almost $20 or more per sheet. So yeah, I definitely um, don't want to waste that paper. I'm just putting some more ink down and going to make another print. 
but this time we're going to use the printmaking paper. Putting more ink onto the brayer evenly. Putting quite more ink onto my brayer. I'm smoothing it out. That even, even layer of ink is what we want. Well, like I was saying before, you know, you can make a block of anything. You can make a block of your logo. Um, you can make a block of your name. You can even do a family crest of, you know, because that was very popular back in like the Victorian era. So um, a lot of people ask, you know, how is block printing still relevant today? It's very relative today because, you know, we wouldn't have newspapers or books without it. So every time you pick up a book, guys, remember, block printing made that happen. <laughs> All right. Taking a sheet of the printmaking paper. Now, once you put the paper on here, because this is wet. Look how pretty this is. Now, this is this is wet. So once you put the paper on there, it's on there. You cannot shift the paper. If you shift the paper, it will smudge. So not only do you have to keep debris out of the ink, but you have to make sure that you have good technique. If you do not have good technique, your print will be ruined. Okay, so once I have my thumb down, I know it has touched the block. So now I'm smoothing it down. Then I take my baron and I just have a mental note in my head of where I'm pressing down. And when you use a printing press, um, it uses a lot of pressure. And when I say a lot of pressure, I really mean a lot. Like uh, it's about the pressure of a car, the weight of a car. So I'm just going around and just making sure that I have hit all the areas that I need to hit. making sure that all the ink is transferring to the paper. Now, if you're unsure, because I mean, it is, I mean, you can't really see what you're doing until you, un, you know, flip up the paper, but if you keep one hand here, you can always take a little peek just to see how it's doing. Right now it's doing very well. Just gonna keep pressing down just to make sure. All right, it's the moment of truth, you guys. All right, here we go. And I wish you could hear the sound because when you roll the ink onto the brayer, it makes the sound of like, I would say like a, a sandpaper, like psh, 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 psh. And even when you take the, the paper off of the block slowly, you can hear that sound of the ink releasing from the block. We printmakers, we love that sound. And wow, guys, it came out 
beautifully. Look at that. Yes. Yes, yeah, so this is a printmaking paper and it came out wonderfully. And if you can see here, we miss no areas. There is not one patch of white here. Everything printed as it was supposed to. And if you look closely, she has a spotlight over her head. She's holding her newborn child and she has like a shaded area beneath her. It's a beautiful piece. Once again, this is called Motherly Love and it's a six by nine. And yeah. So this is how you make block prints, you all. You carve it and then you print it. So as you can see, let me give you a side-by-side -side comparison here. So yeah, it, it turned out great. We have the actual print that we did here. This is the block. This is the progress that we made with the test print. You see, we had, we had some blotchy areas there. We needed more ink. And we fixed it. So when, you, when you're doing printmaking, you have to um, pay attention to the process of what you're doing. Um, and I've also started a, a wall of my blocks in my space. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. So Camilla, if you, if you have any questions, I'm just going to... Um, show some, some pictures of my blocks while um, we get the questions together, if we have any. Yeah, I got some blocks here on display. So yeah, so just because you have a block doesn't mean that you have to just put it in a corner in your office or whatever, you can find different creative ways to um, showcase your work. And in my case, what I did was I used, and this is a piece that I did with the Frisk Art Museum. Um, I just put a sawtooth hanger on the back. So whenever I wanna print this, I can just take the sawtooth hanger out and put it um, print it and then put it back on the wall. 